Hello, my name is Statulund and I'm the head of our expertise team who is uh, responsible uh, delivering uh, support and maintenance services here at Vaadin. Uh, that means that we are helping uh, many of our customers with uh, specific Vaadin uh, uh, issues and also we have some applications uh, what we have delivered uh, to our customers in uh, uh, maintenance and continuous development. And that way we have learned quite a lot that what could be kind of best practice is how to monitor your applications, especially Vardin applications in production. So today I'm talking a little bit about that topic to you. So our topic of the day is monitoring applications in production. There are actually pretty many ways how you can do that. Before going to that, I will present you some ideas why we want to do that. There are a couple of main reasons why we want to monitor applications. One is of course that we want to know that systems run correctly. So we want to monitor the environment where the application is running. Do we have enough resources? Is the operating environment healthy? There's enough memory, processor capacity and so forth so that the applications can potentially run correctly. Also, we want to monitor the applications themselves. Sometimes problems do happen. Applications do have errors and bugs and then we want to know that what actually gone wrong. So we need to have uh, tools in place that we can do the root cause analysis since we are not able to always debug the applications live on the production. And also we want to gather knowledge that how people are using it. So it's not just the, that we have the system there and potential problems, but how people are using it, because that is very vital information for the continuous development of the applications. Fourth uh, important thing is that we uh, also a little bit related to the system itself, that we monitor the costs. So memory uh, displays those uh, of course cost money, but also sometimes some resources we are using in the applications cost money. We, for example, in some applications send a lot of SMSs um, uh, and uh, those are not free of charge. First thing uh, uh, is the system itself, the environment where the uh, application is running, so that I call system health. There are many tools to uh, monitor the system itself, the servers, Operating systems themselves, like Windows, have basic uh, monitoring tools. Especially in Linux environments, there's a lot of third-party tools available, like uh, Zapix and Patrol are good example. Things we typically want to monitor are the CPU usage, memory usage, how much swap memory has been used, uh, is there enough free disk space, and the, uh, of course the network traffic is one thing one we want to also monitor. These are vital in order to have a proper understanding that there's enough system resources to run the application. Especially uh, after the first deployment, where if the application is still in an ad adoption phase and more and more users are starting to use, or we have deployed the application in the growth company where the number of personnel is increasing rapidly who, who are using the application. Um, in some point of time, uh, the system can be, become too small. These tools like uh, Zapix and Patrol, they uh, have a lot of features related to processes. We can set watchdogs to send your email alerts, for example, if Tomcat or HTTPD has been stopped. So we know, get immediate information that something got uh, drastically wrong in the system. So those are good to use. Also getting alerts that, for example, if your CPU load is above a certain threshold, we can, for example, see that if the normal usage of the application is such that the CPU load, say number five, is never reached and we put the alert on level five, once that threshold has been hit, we get an alert. So that can be an indication that something has started to go wrong in the system. Uh, in this slide, I have a screenshot of a CPU load curve of one application. And uh, CPU load curve is also interesting uh, from the behavioral perspective that we get information that when the people are using actually the application, that is it used only office hours or some certain time. So that when we need to be 
alert able to service. I have other example from IBM Bluemix. Many hosting services nowadays, uh, like IBM Bluemix, have actually the same tools integrated so that you don't need to actually install Zapix or Patrol into your server, but uh, there's a control panel where you deploy the application. There's also a control panel there where you can see mostly the same things like the network traffic and also have the alerts for the processes and so forth. These tools had integrated watchdogs. In some cases, you, if you want to go light, you can create the watchdog also yourself. If you don't want to use this kind of enterprise tool, you can set the simple watchdog uh, pretty easily to have another system ping your application on regular time intervals. And that is pretty easy to implement. You, for example, create a REST endpoint to your application, have it there very light backend call so that you get a kind of a whole stack check that it's operational. If your system is not answering this REST call, you know that something is wrong and you can send email or some other message if you want to integrate it with your Slack uh, channel or something like that, that something went wrong and you need to go and log, log into your server and check that what, what went wrong. And that brings us to the next topic, which is logging. Logging is perhaps one of the most important ways to monitor your application when we go to the application level. Now we dealt the kind of overall system level and, and, and the overall level that it's running. But then logging is something that gives you a lot of information uh, about the usage of the application. It's very important that uh, when you are logging, you log enough information, but not too much information. That's kind of a very difficult topic, again, depends a little bit on the application that how much you need to log. But it's kind of a good to remember also that uh, once the application is getting more stable, you can reduce logging. And remember that the logging costs some CPU and disk space and I.O. It's good to have some input and output data logged together in the error cases when you are logging something there. So that helps you in especially when you kind of debug the, uh, uh, the application in production. And when you do the debugging locally, you may not be able to reproduce the issue locally, or you don't have the data to do that locally. It's then actually very important to be aware of all of the legal requirements also, that if you have some personal data or confidential data that uh, what ends up into your log and how long time there's the log. There's, for example, new directive in EU about that. Also, some performance metrics can be logged that when you do backend calls, it, it doesn't hurt to put there the execution time. It's not always wise to put all your logs in the same file. Good reasons for that might be, again, you have confidential data in your access log, but you want to store some performance logs for a longer period of time. It makes also finding things easier than if you have the errors in different places. It's also good to have the format of the logs right so that it's easier to extract the data with common tools like eCrypt and Perl, whatever you are using. You can also consider making the logs machine readable so that uh, you have, for example, the performance logs directly in the CSV or Excel or some other format and you can do nice statistical analysis of them. Same if you put some data on the database and you can use SQL queries then to process the data. I have an example here of a case that uh, we have a back-end system where we did a update which caused it to become much lower than before. It's sometimes difficult to actually find uh, these uh, unless you do a statistical analysis because the system seems to be working normally, but it may show some symptoms of slowness or no, not. But in statistics, you see clearly in this uh, yellow area chart that uh, when the inc incident happened, that the new version is performing badly. Some last pieces of logging, it's always good to also utilize the error levels wisely. Logging tools like simple logging passage for Java have filtering for different error levels so that you, for example, can easily disable some logging from production that you have in testing environment. Remember to recycle the logs 
they consume a lot of space and as I mentioned before there may be even legal reasons uh, why you are not supposed to store some data longer than some certain periods of times. It's not a bad idea to send an email message or some other message uh, of a really exceptional thing happening in the log but then you need to remember that okay uh, it needs to be really exceptional because otherwise it becomes spam and easily ignored. Here I have a totally different tool called Google Analytics. I took this as an example since we have used it in a couple of cases and uh, there's even a Google Analytics add-on available for awarding. It's uh, found from directory, it's fairly popular. As you can see, there's over 40,000 downloads for it and it's fairly easy to use. So you add it to your POM XML and then some piece of code to your main UI so that you can get the tracker instance you are using. And then in each view, doesn't need to be all views, but each view you want to track. You need uh, to add a method to track uh, the page view, which you need to call. This way, although Martin is single page application, you actually then create a pseudo page tracks for Google Analytics. So they will show up in the Google Analytics like opening different page. And you can even give the name of the page. Google Analytics gives you quite nice uh, information about your application. You get, for example, client data, which browser has been used, which operating system, which device, uh, especially more, uh, if you have users with mobile devices, you get good information about that and screen resolution be being used. Also statistics about page views, this means views opened, uh, where they have been opened, some geographical data if your application is used globally and language possibly get the information about local via browser. And also behavioral data, you can get a flow pictures via which views the user has browsed your application and also the session duration. And these pieces of information are really useful for the continuous development of your application. That uh, do you need to do optimization, for example, to the screen sizes and which uh, browsers are important to support and so forth. Also Google Analytics can give you some performance information, but it's based on sampling. So they don't measure every page, but uh, if your application is used a lot, then you can get a pretty good picture about the load times of the views. That was kind of a more about the client monitoring and uh, you can also monitor then the back-end activity. There's a lot of tools also for that. For example, professional enterprise uh, database systems like Oracle DB, they, they have a built-in uh, dashboards and a lot of uh, third-party tools available to analyze your database traffic. And that can be handy to understand, for example, your transactional performance, that if there's a lot of wait times in your transaction that need to be optimized and some other things like uh, storage alerts that if the space reserved for the database is becoming critical. Same can be also done for the SOAP and REST type of calls, especially if your environment is using enterprise databases or something like that. Also, if your REST traffic is put in the pipeline via tools like Hystrix. The Hystrix is not taken a monitoring tool, but its main purpose is to manage high data traffic of REST calls. But this tool also has an integrated dashboard uh, where you can follow the REST call performance. As a summary, there's a plenty of tools for monitoring and most of these methods we have used in the applications what we are monitoring currently. And uh, of course, not all the in the same application. That always is kind of a thing you need to think a little bit ahead. Sometimes during the maintenance period you have emerging need and add some monitoring methods. One thing I strongly recommend also is to do some scalability testing already in the development phase because you cannot do the scalability testing in the production. And that can identify the potential bottlenecks in your application. There's always bottlenecks and weak points and that can uh, help you to find places what you especially need to monitor. And we have some webinars recorded before about how to do scalability testing. Thank you.